you a dairy producer? Or do you grow grapes, nuts, fruits, or vegetables? We have it all with American Vineyard, Pacific Nut Producer, California Fresh Fruit, California Dairy, and Vegetable West magazines. Subscribe for free now at malcomedia.com to stay current on the freshest news in your industry. Hi, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Nut Producer Magazine, reporting to you from a post-harvest almond field day in Los Banos. Growers gathered here today to hear from farm advisor David Dahl, who spoke on the importance of post-harvest irrigation, especially in the drought, and how to go about it. By having a full profile that's all, although maybe filled with well water, um, by having the rain that actually falls on top of that, it'll allow that soil to continue to be pushed downward and outward. In contrast, if we keep that soil dry, especially on double and drip systems, and we have rain that falls on the whole orchard, water likes to move from what is the driest, it actually begins to push that salt front back into the rooting zone of the tree, which makes it harder to mitigate. And it actually will increase the salt load within the active root zone. Um, so, when we look at this leaching program, start early, get the water on, try to get, get recharged down to five feet. Hopefully we begin to get some rain that will help uh, increase the leaching potential of our, our plant. So as we approach the winter time, and more critically in areas in which we're applying lower quality water, which uh, in includes increased levels of sodium, boron, and chloride, it's important to integrate some type of leaching program into our winter, uh, winter orchard management program. And leaching is critical because we have to flush out the salts that have accumulated into the root system all year long. So what I mean by accumulated is we apply water, it has some level of salt in it, the tree actually will do its best to exclude those salts, and then we apply more and suck the water up, and then we'll apply more water, and over time the tree will continue to suck the water up but leave the salt behind, and that salt concentration will build. This will reduce tree growth, and in some cases lead to toxicity, which many of us have seen as scorched, leaves, as scorched leaf tips on, on the plant. So as we come into the winter period, what we need to do is actually move those salts below the rooting zone of the tree. And we can really only do this through the application of water. So we're going to apply water and we want to fill the profile and then after we have a full profile we can begin our leaching program. So many years we've relied on rain to do this but as we enter into potentially our fifth year of drought, hopefully not, but into our fifth year of drought, we need to kind of take matters into our own hands and do what we can to help prevent these trees from suffering from the osmotic effects and the toxic effects of salt. So I, in these cases, a leaching program should be started. We can actually do this in the, through the post-harvest period by applying a little bit more water than the trees need to try to rebuild the soil reserves, but even more so as we come into the dormant period to apply water to fill the soil profile to make sure that we're near, field, near full capacity by around the first week of December. If we have any rain that tends to fall during that period, we can count it as refilling the soil profile. Uh, why I'm suggesting the first week of December is if we don't have any rain by then, we'll need to begin the this, this step two of the leaching program, and that's applying more water to actually leach the salts out of the root zone. So step one is to fill the profile. Step two is actually to leach the water out. If we're getting ample rain by that period, and the rain is actually leaching the water out, that will allow us to reduce the amount of water we're applying to our fields. And so we, in that case, we won't have as much of an expense, either pump or water expense, to apply that water. Thank you, David. Gain the full report of David's presentation in the coming issue of Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgNet.com.